Hello everyone, this is Grace of GB Maltese and I am almost finished with this gorgeous canvas from Treasure Studios Art. This canvas will be available for you to purchase until this Saturday which is going to be the 29th of February happens once every four years leap year so we have a leap year and leap days coming up and today I am going to work on this little heart here and I'm going to put some red crystals in there and I so want to thank Rachel from Treasure Studios Art for sponsoring Rebecca and I for this Valentine's collab we have been doing. Check out Rebecca's canvas. You can purchase either one of these and the coupon code to get 15% off is LOVE15. It is gorgeous. Look at the shine on these beautiful drills. This is gorgeous. I'm almost finished. I have a few little ones left to do, but I thought, let's do that beautiful heart today with you. So, let's move on and see who the next person is to be drawn for this Saturday's giveaway coming up. Okay, we're going to get ready to choose the next name that is going to go on this list. These are the people who are in the running for the, the four different grand prizes that we have. There's Allison McDermott, Angie's Crazy and Minnesota Diamond Painting, Cassie Mize, Judy McIntyre, Becky Porter, Judy Millett, Robin Babcock, Gail S., and Diamond Painting with Dreamer. Let's see whose name is going to be added to this list. There will be one more chosen from Rebecca's channel, and there will be one more chosen from my channel. I will probably draw that one Saturday morning at some point, or Saturday afternoon, before I go live with Rebecca on Saturday night on her channel. So, <clears throat> I have the... YouTube comments ready to see how many. There were 81 unique comments here. You were to tell me when is your birthday. That's it. So let's get started. See who's next. Okay, we have Melissa Barker. Happy birthday. I'm Aaliyah with my birthday on August 22nd. Love hearing the sayings. I'm from Texas as well. Awesome. Okay, so we have Melissa Barker. I'm going to now put her name down. I'm going to write it down here as you are looking. Melissa Barker. And I'm going to show you next what the next prize will be going into the grand prize. I'll be right back. All right. This week I have two Elizabeth Ward assorted bead storage trays. This is going to be this week's added bonus to the whole pot that Elizabeth and I have been collecting over the last few weeks. So, if you've never seen one, this is my favorite storage kit, and this is I, the one I have that I already have kitted up. And as you can see, I have labeled mine with numbers, and I also put the symbol. You can label however you want. And you get big, big ones, all the way to these little ones. So I've even kitted up two diamond paintings at once. Two small ones, I'd put them on this side and the other one I'd put on this side because you can move these little storage trays to any side you want to put them. So that is in this week's 
plus I purchased these from Diamond Painting with Sparklers. It is a sticker kit. It's a diamond painting sticker kit. There's a sticker in here and you're going to put these gorgeous rhinestones on there. Let's see if I can open that to show you the sticker. And that way you can place this sticker anywhere you want to. So here is the sticker. Isn't it beautiful? <clears throat> and you'll just pull that paper back and you will put the rhinestones down. Okay. Very easy. Very easy to use. Um, well, I keep <laughs> knocking things over. Uh, inside you have instructions, I do believe. Well, there, it's a card anyway. But what you do is you look at your sticker. Okay? You'll put the reds on the red, the yellows, and so on until you have this completely covered. So, this is also going in the grand prize pot. Now, these grand prizes are going to be for two people. We're going to be drawing two different names that will be getting all of the things we've been showing. And I'm going to remind you the things that I have shown. Today's includes these beautiful rhinestone sticker kits. And these fantastic bead storage trays. So, this can be used to store a lot of different things. So there's two of those. One will go to one person, one to the other winner. So everything, there's two of them. So that's this week's. The first week I showed you these sparklers. That's going in the prize. The next week, I showed you this package that Tina of Diamond Painting with Sparklers put together. And it is full of goodies of all sorts. You can go back to that. I think it's my maybe second or third one. I opened them up and showed them to you. A lot of good stuff in there. The next week, I showed you these acrylic pens. So, notice there's two of everything, because two people are going to win these things. And I have this lovely patty wax that Robin donated for us. Not only the patty wax, but the pop sockets for your phone. So, there's two patty wax for one person and two for another, and the pop sockets. And... What I showed you last week were these little storage or little bags. I love to have little craft bags. And there's plenty of room to put your pens, your patty wax, you want to put that little diamond painting kit, whatever. There's two signs to it. And on this side, I have also included chocolates. These are, ooh, they're so good. The Lint Lindor truffles. So, go check out Rebecca's because she also has things that you guys that get picked for this pot of prizes will be receiving. So, here they all are lined up for you to see. It's quite a bundle of stuff, plus the things that Rebecca has been showing on her channel. So, be listening today how you can enter. One more person's going to be chosen to be entered into the pot for these grand prizes. It's going to be a total of four different things. 
one of the well two of them are going to be all of these goodies plus Rebecca's goodies and we'll tell you more about the other one Saturday night so I hope everyone will join us and listen now you need to keep listening so you can see how you might be able to get picked for the next drawing I will be drawing this next one on Saturday either in the morning or in the afternoon before Rebecca and I go live Saturday night on her channel crafting journey with Rebecca so be listening I hope that you will enjoy your goodies if you're one of the winners as I said there are gonna be four names picked so hang in there now I'm going to put some red crystals down on my heart on this diamond painting okay I've got us focused on this little red heart and I'm going to be using these sparklers for squares in red that I purchased from Diamond Sparklers, Diamond Painting with Sparklers on Facebook. Um, look at these beauties. Isn't that gorgeous? I did the word love in the sparklers and I really do like it. Another thing I wanted to show you today is I have some patty wax. Super sticky. And I'm going to do a separate video on this and I've been using this the last couple of days. I love it. You just kind of scrape just a little bit in there. Real easy. You just kind of push it in. And this stuff is sticky. <laughs> and the wonderful part of this, it does not leave boogers all over your drills. This stuff is awesome. And I'll go ahead and you just want to use this on your single placers. That's real easy to do. And I usually kind of mash it usually on the edge of my canvas, but I was just showing you how I do that just to kind of get it packed in there. So, while I'm working on this, I'll tell you a few more idioms that I have found. I've had a lot of you tell me that you are enjoying me telling you these things and I have been learning a lot during this journey of this. So let's put a couple of these down and let's. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you this beautiful. <gasps> okay, that's just one. <laughs> we get one down, but it is so pretty. And I'm going to do all of this, even though there are different symbols in here. I'm going to do them all in this red because that's what I've chosen to do. And it is beautiful. I, I will do sometimes checkerboard with my rounds, with the squares, and um, it's harder for me to do this while I'm on camera. I can't get as close to it as I normally do I'm kind of away a little bit away from it and then I go back through and straighten it up and that's what this tool is so fantastic and I do have one of these in the package with the dime uh, the diamond painting pens if you if you win one of those grand prizes so let's talk about a few idioms we'll just do a few today um get one's goat now if you get someone's goat that means you're irritating them and um, yeah I hate it when someone tries to get my goat I don't like to be irritated I don't know anyone who does but you say where in the world did that come from and I found this one to be quite interesting they actually used goats for um, racehorses. If they had a really nervous racehorse, they would put a goat in the stable along with the racehorse. And for some reason, that goat calmed the horse down. 
And as long as the goat was in there, the horse remained calm and not getting agitated. Well, there were times that the maybe competitors or someone who didn't like that person, they would they would get the goat out of the stall of that horse and the horse would again become agitated. So that's where that phrase come from came from. Get to get one's goat. Yeah, they took that goat that was calming that poor horse down and then the horse became agitated again. So if someone's getting your goat, yeah, they're really bugging you. They're not being very nice. So, I try not to get anyone's goat, but I guess it happens sometimes. We, we can irritate someone without even knowing it at times. Sometimes I think my husband just tries to get my goat. He likes to see me get, get a rise out of me at times. Any of you have know anyone like that? Likes to get your goat? The next one I have is my ears are burning. Now, I know I've heard a lot of people say that. Oh, my ears are burning. Someone is talking about me. And that actually came back in the ancient Roman times. And the ancient Romans thought that any part of your body that might have a burning sen sensation meant something. Well, they thought if their ears were burning, it meant something. If your left ear was burning, it meant that someone was talking about you in a bad way. They meant evil intent on you. If your right ear was burning, that meant that someone was talking very nicely about you, maybe praising you, saying what a wonderful person you are. So if you say, my left ear is just burning like crazy, that means someone's talking bad about you. So we only want our right ears to burn because that means someone is saying good things. Okay, and this stuff can get really, really, really sticky <laughs> and it will get that stuck in there and I just take it off and you don't have to press down hard and that sometimes is what I do and then I get it stuck on stuck in there so you don't have to press hard on this at all I love this super sticky patty wax and well I love the other patty wax too that's why I said I'm gonna do another video on patty wax this stuff is amazing. Amazing. Okay, the next one is to let the cat out of the bag. If you tell a secret, let accidentally or on purpose, if you let the cat out of the bag, that means you have told a secret, whether it was on purpose or by accident. And this came from farmers that would take their pigs to market. They actually took their pigs in bags and they would sell them in those bags. I, I'm just guessing maybe to keep them from running away. I really don't know. But what they would do, the dishonest farmers, there were some dishonest ones just like we have people today who aren't quite honest. Instead of pigs being in the bag, they put cats in the bag. So Someone would buy that bag thinking they bought a bag full of pigs. You know, you pay a good price for those pigs. Then you get home, you open the bag, you let the cat out of the bag, and yeah, the secret is out. You were duped. <laughs> the secret is out. You bought cats instead of pigs. So, that could be a real big disappointment. Um... If you were thinking you were going to have pigs. So that's where that term came from. I really had no idea that that practice would ever take place. <laughs> wow. Um, have you ever heard of the whole nine yards? If someone gives you the whole nine yards, that means they give you everything. Okay? You get it all. Like on this giveaway we're doing. You're going to get the whole nine yards of the things we've shown. This actually comes from World War II. 
and the fighter pilots had ammunition that they would feed in through the guns. So the ones who were doing the shooting, if when they had the ammunition, they had nine yards of ammunition. It was all on a belt and it was fed through the gun. If they used all of those nine yards on one target, it was said they used the whole nine yards. They used it all. And that's where that saying came from. Can you imagine nine yards of bullets? Wow. Um, then we have sleep tight. I know I have told people sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And this part didn't have the bed bug part, but I can see where it might have been added in because the sleep tight part um, was back during Shakespeare's time. And back in those days, they had mattresses they stuffed mostly with straw, hay, um, whatever they had. And I, maybe they used cotton or leaves or wool, whatever they had to stuff, depending on, uh, I guess, your financial status. Okay, let go, let go. It would depend on what would be filling your bag, uh, your mattress, excuse me. And you would tie the mattress to hold everything together. So if your ropes, they were tied with ropes, if your ropes were tied nice and tight, that meant that your mattress was going to be well sprung. It's going to be nice and comfy. So when someone tells you to sleep tight, they're hoping you have a good night's rest. So just imagine if your mattresses are filled with straw or hay, yeah, you are probably going to have some kind of bugs or something in there. So maybe the don't let the bug bag, bed bugs bite came in later. I'll have to look that one up. I didn't have a chance to, to check that one out. But that's where sleep tight came from. Tied up, tied up those mattresses nice and tight. You don't want your straw or hay coming out because then you whew, go flat. You have a flat one. Okay. How many of you know someone who cannot keep a secret? Okay, we already heard about letting the cat out of the bag. Well, I've got another saying that means uh, someone has let a secret loose. And you might, you've probably heard this one before. Spilling the beans. Okay, if someone spills the beans, that means they tell something that you've been trying to keep maybe as a secret. Maybe you were going to have a surprise party and someone said, Oh, guess what? So-and-so's giving you a surprise party next Saturday. Yeah, you've spilled the beans. You've let the cat out of the bag. Well, this saying comes from ancient Greece. When they would vote on um, maybe a, a, a new ruler, what they would do is if they liked that ruler and they wanted them to be picked, they put a white bean into the jar. Okay, so you put the bean in, everybody goes by, and nobody's supposed to be looking at what you're doing. So no one should know how many white beans are going in there. If you are not for that candidate, you put a black bean in. That means you are voting against that person. So, if they had more white beans than black, they would win. Well, many times the jar got knocked over. So, they would be able to see just how many white and black beans would be in there. So, if you saw a whole bunch of white beans laying there, you think, oh, <laughs> I'm going to get elected. Looks like I'm going to win. So, that's, that's telling the secret. They're going to know ahead of time. So, that is spilling the beans. So, you either let the cat out the bag or you're spilling the beans if you can't keep the secret. Okay. Um, pull out all the stops. Let's say you are going to give someone a party. That said party. 
that means you are going to have everything there. It's going to be the most fabulous party that has ever been. You're pulling out all the stops. That actually came from playing the organ. And I do. I used to play the organ in the church. And when um, pipe organs were used, they had stops that could close and open how much sound was going to come out of those pipes. If you pulled all the stops out, that means it's going to be really loud. You got all them pipes opened up. So you're letting it all loose. You're getting all that music out nice and loud and sweet. Maybe so you hope it's sweet. <laughs> but that's pulling out all the stops. And uh, sometimes we do that for special occasions. We're going to we're going to just go all the way with it. You put a great effort into it. It could be maybe you're going to um, run a race and you give it everything you got. You're pulling out all the stops. You're giving it your best. So that's where it came from. Pulling out all the stops on the organ so it let out all the music. It was not muffled in any way. Oh, uh, I thought this next one was... Um, kind of gross in some ways. Uh, it's eat humble pie. Okay. Or some humble pie, however you pronounce it. But I wanted you to hear that it starts with an H. Humble or humble pie. If someone makes you eat humble pie, that means that they um, are going to either make you apologize or they're going to humiliate you in some way. Maybe you did something that was really bad or said something that shouldn't have been said, or whatever. And maybe you did it in front of a lot of people. And most of the time, if you're going to have to eat humble pie, you're going to be humiliated in front of other people. That is um, the general meaning of it. Now, where did it come from? <laughs> it came from the Middle Ages. And... In the Middle Ages, they would go out hunting, and they would hunt for, oh, deer, wild boar, pheasant, whatever it was they were hunting for. When they got finished, they had a huge feast, and the lord of the manor always got the best pieces of meat from the hunt or whatever they might have on hand, and the people who were of lower status, they were made to eat a special type of pie that was filled with the innards or the um, entrails or the inside parts of an animal, you know, the guts, the intestines. Okay, they'd make a special pie and that was cooked inside that pie. And they, those those were called umbles, those special entrails and intestines. They called those umbles, and they were baked into a pie. So, if you were made to eat humble pie, humble pie, whatever, it meant you were being humiliated because you were of lower status than the others that were at the hunting party. So, that carried on today to still mean someone has humiliated you in some way not by really eating an humble pie but in some other way so if you have to eat humble pie yeah it, it mm, I read that and I'm like that's just nasty the next one I found it really kinda made me mad and you'll see why when I when I tell you. It's called rule of thumb. Okay. Rule of thumb is an accurate guide that is based on experience, okay? So if someone tells you this is the way things are done, that's the that it means it's the rule of thumb. I don't hear that used a whole lot. I have heard it, but I don't hear it used as often 
nowadays. But this is where it came from. This took place in the 17th century. And there was this judge whose name was Sir Francis Buller. And he decided that it was okay for a man to beat his wife with a stick as long as it was not wider than his thumb. That's called the rule of thumb. So, I would want to make sure my husband, I, I might cut his thumbs off and there'd be nothing there. I thought, how, but, har, how barbaric. Yeah, beating someone. I mean, really? Anyway, that's where rule of thumb came from. And I thought, that that's just awful. Okay, the, the last one I'm going to, uh, idiom I'm going to tell you is called to show a leg. Uh, I've also heard shake a leg. If someone's trying to get you to hurry up and, and, and move on, you know, get out of bed. Come on, let's go. We got to go. Shake a leg. Um, they also used to say show a leg. <laughs> and this was used with sailors. Sailors would uh, sleep in hammocks. Of course, this was quite a while ago. And the sailors would try to sneak women aboard. So they would have them on their journeys on the sea. So what would happen before the ship took off? The captain or whoever was in charge would go through all of the, I guess, sleeping areas and go to the hammocks and say, show a leg. If the leg that was stuck out was a big old hairy leg, everything was fine. So they'd go to the next hammock and say, show a leg. If a nice, pretty, hairless leg was shown out from the hammock, they were asked to leave the ship immediately. <laughs> so, show a leg meant get out of bed. Out. Now, get out. Let's go. Get out of here now. I have heard shake a leg, so it maybe it's based on the same principle. I thought that was kind of cute. Show a leg. Big old hairy leg sticking. I got cut off there for a minute. Uh, yeah. Sticking old hairy leg out. You, you can put it. You can <laughs> go ahead and put that on back in there. I don't want to look at that anymore. So those are my idioms for today. And I had several of you said that you liked the Texas sayings that I had. So I looked up just a few more. Some of them I have heard of. Some of them might be in a different area of Texas than where I am. But one of them is, is someone who talks a lot. Now, sometimes I can, I can sit there and I can just chat away. Um, and I will say this sometimes. I could chat the, uh, I could talk the ears off a brass monkey. Yeah. That is... A term that I use <laughs> and it you could put anything in place of that you could say I could you could talk the ears off a chair or you could talk you could talk the legs off a chair sorry chairs don't have ears um, so any you could put any phrase in there that you want but I always you hear me say it sometimes I could talk the ears off a brass monkey and that means that, uh, yeah, shh, just shh, stop talking so much. <laughs> um, the next thing um, is he's got a 10-gallon mouth. Now, in Texas, hats were, the size of the hats were sometimes measured by gallons. The bigger the gallon hat, the bigger the hat. So... If you have a 10-gallon hat, that is huge. So if you could, um, if you have a 10-gallon mouth, that means you got one really big mouth. Stop talking now. Um, <laughs> I hadn't heard this one, but I thought it was funny. She's got tongue enough 
for 10 rows of teeth. Yeah, if <laughs> I just pictured uh, something like piranhas or something. <laughs> the big old tongue in there lollygagging around. <laughs> so that's somebody who's very talkative. You know, they just go on and on and on and on. Um, oh, and I have heard this one. You could talk up a blue streak. Don't ask me what that really means, but that's just something we say. I guess if you have a flame going real fast, I mean, you're, whoo, you're really, really talking it up. Okay, if someone is very scared, <laughs> um, you might say, she backed out quicker than a crawfish or a crawdad. Depends on where, which area of Texas you're from. Um, and, yeah, a crawfish, they live in these mounds. They're real tall. And you can see them sometimes when it's been real rainy. Crawdads, or crawfish, or crayfish, however you pronounce it, will live in some of the ditches. They and they build a mound. And the top of the mound has to be above the water in order that they can breathe. So, um, if you knock their mound down, try going in there after them, I'm going to tell you what, they back down in there. Uh, you have to be very, very, you have to know what you're doing if you're going to go crawfishing. I remember my brothers used to get strings with meat or whatever on it and put them down them little holes. My husband said he did the, do the same thing. Try to catch, catch one of those crawfish. Of course, one ain't going to do any good. Mostly they just, you know, let it go after they played around with it for a while. But, uh, yeah, in this area where I live, crawfish is a dish that people love. Here in East Texas, Louisiana, and they like it hot. Lots of spice. Now, if you're talking about uh, being scared, another thing that you might say is, yellow suits her. Because we do know that uh, a lot of people associate the color yellow with a coward. So, if you say, mm, yellow sure does suit her, you're saying, she's scared. Uh, another one, scared as a cat in a dog pound. So, that is pretty self-explanatory. I can't tell whether I'm getting these straight or not. I'll be able to look at it better when I get finished and I can straighten things up if I need to. Okay, someone who is happy. I've got a few sayings here. This is one that I like to say. She's happy as a hog and slop. And slop is what we call the food that we throw out to the pigs. Yeah, I'm happy as a hog and slops. That's pretty darn happy. Or some people say, I'm happy as a hog in the mud. When it's real hot in the summertime, yeah, hogs like to wallow around in the mud to cool off. That is one of their ways to cool down. And in these hot Texas summer, yeah, you need some mud roll around in. <laughs> Here's another one, and this is one I've heard before, too. She took to you like buzzards to a gut wagon. <laughs> I've heard other things that were placed in the wagon besides guts. <laughs> but, yeah. We have, um, I'm sure, probably every area of has buzzards or vultures they find something dead and they're down there eating it so you know if someone takes to you like a buzzard to a gut wagon they sure do like you sure enough do okay another one I'm happy as a clam at high tide and fine as cream gravy 
in the south we eat cream gravy and I have a friend who's up north and she said they eat brown gravy and my mom was from New Hampshire and when she made gravy it was normally brown gravy my granny shoo, she could make some of the finest cream gravy you could oh that stuff's good smooth mmm yeah I'm not a real big gravy eater um, anymore I used to like gravy maybe with my biscuit or roll or something and you hear people talk about eating sausage and biscuits or sausage um, biscuits and gravy yeah good stuff and that's all in Texas okay all right that's enough for that now what do you need to comment below in order to be in this giveaway okay the next name that might be chosen remember I'm going to choose this on Saturday because that's going to be the end of our collab Saturday night and this is what I want you to, to okay um, I'm giving you the bead store storage trays in this one I want you to tell me what is your favorite way to what kit up your drills in your kit I've gotten to where I leave them in the bags a lot of times so you might put I like to kit up in baggies or I, I put my drills in baggies I put my drills in. I also have Harbor Freight storage containers I like those too so I want you to tell me how do you like to kit up your diamond painting I kit up my DP DP short for diamond painting I kit I like to kit up my DP in baggies I like to kit up my DP in you might have pill boxes how do you like to kit up your DPs that's what I want you to comment below and that's what I'll be looking for when I do the drawing this Saturday as I said I'm going to do it sometime during the day Saturday so that that name will be in for the drawing Saturday night and we will be going live on Rebecca's channel 7 o'clock Central Standard Time as far as I know as far as the last time when I uh, chatted with Rebecca Ooh, Lord and mercy isn't that pretty that's so pretty so I have finished the heart I have just a very few little things left to do on this and she's done Wow I'm so excited this is beautiful so beautiful and if you want to get this canvas or the one that Rebecca is doing remember Saturday's the last day that you can order it. They will be gone forever. So, and on Treasure Studios Art, she is starting to get some orders out. Slowly but surely, China is getting through the coronavirus. And we, I hope and pray that there are no other countries. I know there's it's spreading to other countries now. And that it just it just needs to disappear I hear that warm weather hot weather can get rid of it well I guess we need our sex of summer quick then don't we okay <coughs> excuse me don't forget to come on comment below my favorite way to kit up my DP is with baggies or with a Harbor Freight storage or whatever you want to however you kit yours up anyway I'm gonna let you go for now I hope that you're having a wonderfully blessed day night evening morning whatever time it is you watch this take care and remember share those smiles and your love bye guys love you